Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you're all having a great day. I'm having a great day. Thanks for joining for another episode of Tableau Tip Tuesday, the series where we take a closer look at some of Tableau's functionality. From beginner to expert, this is a great series for you to find some hidden gems to take your visualizations to a new level. Today as the title suggests, we will be discussing survey data. Analyzing survey data holds some challenges, uh, mainly in the structure of the data itself, and oftentimes um, it's these challenges that makes it scary to visualize. Um, but we're going to learn here today that with just a couple of fundamentals, we can visualize survey data um, in no time. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and take stock of what we have here. If I go over here to sheet one, you can see that we have a couple of different data sources. And we'll notice some problems at the outset about the way that this data is structured. So first, let's go ahead and look at our survey data right here by using our view, view data button. And we can see that we have five different columns for each of the questions. Now, this is going to be a problem because it's not going to aggregate correctly. So for example, if I just put Q1 up on text, I would get an aggregation of all of the response values without a way to disaggregate them by question because of the way that the columns are structured. So if we put this on text, yes, this is a sum of all of my Q1 responses. And if I need to, I can use a question ID field to see the response for each question, but I want to aggregate all of the like questions together. Now, the second file that I have here is just a helper file. So oftentimes with survey data, you won't get the question data in there just because of the way that the structure of the column comes from the export of the survey. So right here, we have a helper file that matches the question text with the question name. And we're going to use a data blend in order to uh, uh, rectify that issue here. But before we do that, we need to pivot our data so that we have a column called question and a column called response. So if I come back here to my data source tab <clears throat> and we swap our data source to our survey data right here, we just need to multi-select these five columns by holding shift to click all of them. Whoops. There we go. And then we can right click and pivot. Now this is going to give me a new field called pivot names uh, and pivot values right here. So now we can see that we have a question title or a question ID at least. We'll add the title later and then we have the value for that question. So we'll go ahead and we'll rename this field right here question. This is going to come into play, to, uh, into play later and we'll discuss why here. Um, right here pivot field values we will rename this as response. All right, and that's all there is to it. If we come back over here to a new sheet, we can use a data blend to have our helper file automatically input the question name. So that instead of just an ID here, again, we'll click our view data. Instead of just Q1 here, I want to see the text of the actual question itself. <clears throat> so we can accomplish that by taking our question name right here and dragging it onto rows. And we switch our data source here and we go with our description title right here. And there we can see the question title or the question text. And we just have to right click the description that comes from our secondary data source here. And we can edit our primary aliases. So now when I press OK, we're going to notice that instead of Q1 here, it's going to copy the description text, which is just coming through from a data blend. Now, the nice thing about this is now when I go back to my survey data here on a new sheet, we go back to our survey data. We could put our question ID in there. Now, instead of Q1, Q2, we're getting our actual question text, uh, which is exactly what we were after here. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to break down the responses to each of these questions. Now, if we use the response field as we got it from our pivot, we're only going to get aggregated values, which again is not going to be ideal. We want to know how many people answered one, how many people answered two, so on and so forth, um, rather than just aggregating those numbers together. So what we have to do here is we have to take our response field here and we're actually going to duplicate it so that we can convert one of the copies up here to discrete. Now that we have this, we can place this on color and we can see those values for one, two, and three, four, and five discreetly rather than just aggregating those numbers together. Now we're not quite done here yet. We want to do a quick calculation here on our response total so that we can have each one of these bar lengths representative of 100%. So that's just done using a quick table calculation here, 8% of total, whoops, <clears throat> a quick table calculation here 
um, of a percent of total, not a percent difference, and we want the scope of that to be of type cell so that each bar is representative of 100%. Now let's go ahead, we'll increase the view so we can see it a little bit bigger, and we'll duplicate this response field to our label right here, and we can see the percentage values of people that answered 1 through 5 for each of the questions here. Now, if we want, we could even break this down by gender. Again, this aggregates just normal, uh, just like a normal view that we build in Tableau here. <clears throat> and we're going to take this one step further. Perhaps we want a average per question. So we want to know, yes, we know the breakdown of people that responded, but what is the overall average per question? And we can actually do this with an LOD calculation. Now, if you are confused as to write your own L LODs, um, I did do a video on it just a couple of weeks ago. A uh, great video. I highly recommend that. I'll try and remember to put that in the description here. Um, but our calculation is going to say for every single gender and question, give me my average of response. And there we go, just like that. That LOD should give us the average per question. We can go ahead and convert that to discrete as well. We don't want to aggregate those results. What we prefer is to have that over here so we can see that average right here. Let's go ahead, we'll take some time here. We can go ahead and right click and format those number values so that maybe they don't have so many decimals here. We'll say number custom and we'll bring those decimals down to just two. There we go. We have just analyzed our survey data. Hopefully this makes it a little bit less scary for some of you in the future. Um, Tableau handles survey data quite well. We just need a basket of a couple of fundamentals uh, before we try and do that ourselves. All right, that being said, that's all we have for you this week. Join us next week for another tip.